lot of people right now. So this is our fourth tour, right? From the jailhouse, from the old store, and then the store, um, the souvenir store, and now the chowli. So that is our. This is the destination or the road Castillo de San Marcos, Fountain of Fruit, Oliveira Farm, Flogler College, uh, Father's Wax Museum. Oh, okay. There's a lot of people right now. But what he did find was the Gulf Stream, and the Gulf Stream was very important <laughs> because it helped sort of right? ships return from the New World to Spain about three weeks ago. The Gulf Stream is a current in the ocean. There, there was like a super highway back to Spain. They'd save about three weeks on that travel time, so that was a very important thing. Now, the Spanish tried several times in the early 1500s to establish a permanent settlement here in. Florida, but they did not succeed. Sometimes they had problems with the natives, sometimes they ran out of supplies, sometimes they just got hit by hurricanes. But in 1564, the French Huguenots settled in Fort Caroline. Fort Caroline is now part of Jacksonville. And those French Huguenots, well, they were, among other things, they were attacking Spanish ships. So that did not make the King of Spain oh, very happy. Right yes, so the King dear, of Spain sent out his best admiral, Pedro Menendez, yes. to get rid of the French and to establish a permanent settlement here in Florida. Pedro Menendez landed here in 1565, and if you notice that giant cross on the left in the background, that cross marks the spot where Pedro Menendez landed. He landed here on the feast day of St. Augustine. And he named the area after that 5th century theologian, St. Augustine of Hippo. That's how the city gets his name. <coughs> now shortly after he arrived, uh, Pedro Menendez took off to uh, confront the French at Fort Caroline. When he got to Fort Caroline, he found the fort was lightly guarded, and he easily took the fort. The reason the fort was lightly guarded was because the French had learned about the Spanish arrival in the city, and they were on their way down here to attack the Spanish. Well, the French traveled down the coast of Florida in a 12-ship armada. Unfortunately for the French, though, they hit a hurricane, and they became shipwrecked just south of the city. Only about 300 survived, and when Pedro Menendez came back, he found those survivors to make a long story short. But on this land once stood the famous San Marcos Hotel. San Marcos, that was historic, by the way. The San Marcos was Florida's first grand hotel. It had, well, it was built about 1879. It had electricity, it had uh, steam heat, it had its own theater. It even had Otis elevators. Yep. And in 1884, Henry Flackler came down and stayed at the San Marcos Hotel. He was on his honeymoon. And he fell in love with St. Augustine and found to make it a resort area to rival the French Riviera. Now, Henry Flackler was one of the wealthiest people in the world at the time. He was co-founders with John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil. Today's Standard Oil is known as Exxon Mobil. Well, by the time... Going out backwards, as if we go down the and use those uprights and handhelds for support. Breeze feels good. Mm -hmm. I love the smell of the ocean. What does that mean? I don't know if I'd like to put it apart. No, I don't. It's nice taking the air off there in the a lot of the floors, the second floors and balconies around town may have been added by the British. Now if you look to the left, this corner house on the left, notice there's no door that faces the street. That's typical of the way the Spanish built their homes. Spanish like to have a door that opened into a courtyard, you exit into a courtyard. Oh, okay. Exit to the left. Let me sit right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, welcome aboard, folks. Oh, welcome to Old Town Trolleys. All right, folks, have a great day. While we're on board, there is no smoking, no vaping, no consumption. Oh, right. 
Now this area of town is called the Menorcan Quarter. Menorcans were a Mediterranean people. They came here from the island of Menorca, which is just south of Spain. They came here together with some Greeks, some Italians, and some Spaniards, and they worked as indentured servants on an indigo plantation in New Smyrna. New Smyrna is about 60 miles south of here. When that plantation failed, in the oh, 10,000 descendants of the Menorcans that live in the city today. And they're very active socially. They have, well, they found the perfect piece of land to build the hotel on right in the center of town. It was exactly what he wanted. But there was one problem. There was a church on that land. So he met with the congregation of the church and he offered to build them a new church if they could sell him their land. And they finally agreed and the church he built for them is right here on the corner. The Grace United Methodist Church. A new flag would build this church in 1887 cost them $84,000 to build this church in those days. That would be about $2 million today. And the piece of land he received for this building this church was only worth about $5,000, so he was either very generous or he really wanted that land. A little of both, I guess. Uh, the church is built in Spanish Renaissance Revival style. And most of the buildings that Henry Flagler would build in St. Augustine were in that Spanish Renaissance Revival style because he wanted to reflect the Spanish heritage of the city. $50,000 to build this church in 1889, that would be about $8 million today. And if you notice that tower on the church, that tower is 150 foot high and it has a copper dome on it, on top of that copper dome. Now electricity was very new in those days. Uh, Edison only invented the light bulb in 1879, and it was shortly after that that the hotel opened. So a lot of the guests were afraid of electricity. Some of the guests, yeah, they were used to they were used to kerosene lamps at that time. Some of the guests were so afraid of electricity that the hotel had to hire staff to go from room to room just to turn on and off the electric. They were called switchers. Very exclusive, very opulent hotel, only for the very wealthy. You could only rent it by the season. The season was about three and a half months, usually started in December. Whether you stayed one day of the full season, you had to pay for a full season. And that cost about $4,000 in those days, which would be equal to about $125,000 today. So you had to have quite a bit of money to stay at this hotel. <laughs> now even with that price tag, the hotel was a complete success from the minute it opened its doors. Wow. And within a, less than a year, Henry Flangle would be building a second hotel, in part to handle the overflow from the Ponce Leon. So they had a, a lot of people with a lot of money in those days. Now if you look to the right, that round sphere you see on the right, that is the student cafeteria today. But back in the day, that would have been the formal dining room and the ballroom of the hotel. It sat up to 600 people. It is surrounded by 79 Tiffany stained glass windows. Pour a foot of concrete, wait for it to dry, then pour another foot, wait for that to dry, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the top. That's why you see that layered effect on the building. This was only the second building in America to use poured concrete. It was built in 1883, and it served as Franklin Smith's winter home until he passed away in 1911. Then for a short period of time, it was turned into a speakeasy in the 1920s. And by 1933, they turned it into a museum. Today, they have artifacts from all over the world inside. Most notable is the Egyptian room. They have a real mummy in it, and they have a 2,400-year-old rug taken from one of the pyramids. That rug is made entirely of cat hair. <laughs> the cat is a sacred animal in Egypt, so I'm assuming that's why they did that. Now, if you do want to exit the 1960s, Martin Luther King came down to Lincolnville quite a bit. And if you look directly ahead of us, that is, uh, I'm sure there's some alcohol served on that one, so. But that is the Black Raven, that is a interactive pirate tour. Now, does anybody know why pirates have such a difficult time learning the alphabet? 
because they spent up to a year at sea. Now, you know why pirates don't like to play cards? Like Jim Rummy and stuff like that? It's because the captain is always standing on the deck. Not very expensive, good food. Staff is good too, they have good, good people there. But it's the weekend, and if you go there tonight, you better go early, because by 6.30 there's a line at the door. What did you say, my name? Now, we're coming up to stop number 17. That'll be Mission, uh, I'm sorry, that'll be Castillo de San Marcos. This is the oldest and the largest masonry fort in America. There were nine forts here. guys welcome back to my channel so for, th for today's video guys this is my part 3 video during our vacation in the city of St. Augustine, Florida so dito po na i-share pakita ko sa inyo lahat ng mga those old buildings na until now nandun pa rin sa lugar uh, talagang iniingatan nila guys kasi part nga sa history or you know part of the historic city St. Augustine so I'm so happy to share to you all uh, this, uh, you know, exploration, <laughs> a day of exploration in the city of St. Augustine. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And once again, if you're new in my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And to all my subscribers, please like, share, and comment below. You all have a nice week, everyone. And uh, stay safe and God bless you all. Love you. Mwah.